kidding. They weren't the first. Mind, they never cheered like that for us when we did it. Let me tell you, Deanie lad. Take a last look at your pal. Must have known. He said goodbye to me last night. Usually he said see you tomorrow. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't got all day, you know. Well, he has. There's lots for the incinerator. See it goes, will you? Well, come on, we have to clear up in here. I wonder why he's so friendly with you. You're such a miserable old swine for everyone else. We talk football. We play for some funny old team that supported Middlesbrough. I support Arsenal. We used to have some right old arguments. Yorkshireman, wasn't he? No, not Durham. What brought him down here? He came with his sons when they got on jobs at the pit at Bettishanger. Oh, I don't remember them visiting him. Must have been a swine to them, too. They were killed in a pitfall. Who's burying him, then? The mine workers. Plus, he had a bit in his post office book, but there'll be no charge on anyone. Look, Dean. First rule of nursing, don't get involved. What was he, 80 odd? 82. Well, he had a good innings, didn't he? Good innings? If you could tell him or anyone else who's dead, well, he had a good innings, didn't you? I bet they say, yeah, and all, another, and all. Right, the stuff on that bed and the rest of the junk in the bedside cupboard for the incinerator, and don't take all day about it. The living needs you more than he does. This is Baron Brodie and Gray, reference West Auckland Football Club, an account with the London Joint Stock Bank Limited, Bishop Auckland. May 1910. My Edie's out visiting, the bands are asleep, and though I'm a night shift, I cannot sleep for thinking and wondering. Is it only a month gone since our team, West Auckland, has played for England in the very first World Association Football Trophy? Aye, the very first. And us, West Auckland, were chosen for our country. And there's no doubt in that we were. Well, I must tell the truth. We're not the best team in the Northern Amateur League. I think lying third from bottom of the table with no sign of movement upwards gives a picture of a true merit. Why, just to see us. Jimmy Dickinson in goal. Rob Gill and Charlie Hogg backs. Jack Greenwell, me, Bob Jones captain, and Tom Gill half backs. Rob Guthrie, Jock Jones, Ben Tillett Whittingham, Tot Gubbins and Cressy Crawford. Why, all good lads and true, but not of the first calibre.
called me a bastard. You kicked him. It was a sliding oh. tackle. Intended. I just didn't get no sliding to it. A sliding tackle. Penalty! Okay. You should be on the bloody music hall, you like. We're still in it. You know, wonder they call you dirty hoggy. Do they? What's it got to do with you, like? He's me brother. Right. I believe in keeping things in the family. Come on now, come on now, get the ref. What about the goal? Come here. Are we, are we, are we, are we? Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come Hey, that was no penalty in our hoggy, no penalty. There you are, it. <laughs> charabang, they've got a bloody charabang. Uh, well, thanks to you, they've got two bloody points and all. Being Captain like, I knew they was all waiting for us to say something. But as usual, Hoggy was the first to speak. What do you think, Bob? How you doing, Jimmy? Oh, fine, Bob. Fine. Yeah, sorry, lads. It's all right, Jimmy, man. It wasn't your fault. Why? Why what, Bob? The other fella. Well, the winger was bad enough. At least I could understand it. But the other fella. He was the winger's brother. You did him because he was his brother. Look, man, he said I was dirty. Just sometimes I wish you'd use your head for thinking. Oh, your head and the ball, I mean. Look, if you were the brothers did a bit more playing, I'd have to do a lot less kicking. People, I mean. Mr. Barnes. Cheers, Pep. Thanks, man. Sure, Look, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Barn. Sixty-one adults at a penny halfpenny, seven shillings and seven me. Twelve juniors at a halfpenny, six pence. Total seven shillings and seven halfpenny. Deduct five, leaving at half time. Throttons three farthings. Payment to Stockton Football Club, <coughs> two shillings and fivepence farthing. Grand total, four shillings and tenpence halfpenny. Your uh, new ball collection raised fourpence three farthings. Well, gentlemen? Yes, went no. Well, not bad, Mr. Barrett. Well, considering the way our performance has been falling off, it's surprising we've been able to hang on to our support as well as we have. Indeed, as of this day, the 9th of March, 1910, our balance at the bank stands at 15 pounds, 19 shillings, and 10 pence, three farthings. Now, lads, the gloom descends. Played, 28, wins, 7. Draws, 3. Losses, 18. Position in Northern Amateur League, third from bottom, with 17 points gained. Yeah, it's green, Mark. Lads, I'm sorry, sir, but we're on shift. Oh, I I'm sorry, Bob. Don't let us keep you, Mr. Barron.
heads high, chaps. If I, um... Uh, if I might offer a, a, a thought from our commanding officer after a particularly uncomfortable engagement with the Boer, he said to us, he said, Gentlemen, the battle is lost. The war is yet to be won. Today is history, tomorrow a mystery. Well, it brought us particular cheer at the time. Good night, lads. I wait, Jimmy, we'll get you home. Go on. Keep your hand and get me clubber on. I'm on shift and I'll... Minute. Charlie. Charlie, of course. Oh, no. Take care. in a week. 25 years in the pit and there wasn't a day I didn't step into that cage and feel I should have been wearing brown trousers. I was that scared. And not a day I didn't come up and could have burst me lungs singing for joy. 12 shilling a week. And only that if you got canny coal. That was coal you could cut easy. 12 shilling. Five bob if you were a lad. The good old days, but somewhere far off, a fella to whom 12 shilling meant nothing was making plans. John Westwood is here, sir. Oh, show him in, man, show him in. Come in, lad. I came at once, Sir Thomas. What's the matter with you, man? Well, it's, uh, it's Sunday, sir. Aye. Ungodly, isn't it? What time do you have? 9.30, sir. Man, you look great. You look as though I'm about to two-end you into the street. Cheer up, John. I've only called you out to tell you some news. Good news. Sit down. Have you breakfasted, John? Well, it, it really doesn't matter, sir. John, bring Mr. Westwood a bowl of rice pudding. Steaming hot. Good, eh, John? I have it twice a day, every day of my life. And it's better than an apple for keeping the doctor away. Yes, Sir Thomas. I don't know why I haven't thought of this before. Well, sir, the apple a day theory. No, ma'am. This idea of working over breakfast. Of course, perhaps not on Sundays, and I apologize for interrupting yours. Oh, it really doesn't matter, Sir Thomas. Mind you, I have experienced it before. I, when I was a lad in the United States, the cotton planter I worked for used to hold working breakfast. The idea wasn't singular to him. That's how the successful businessman gets ahead over there. Don't waste seconds, because they build into minutes, which build into hours and so on. 
You never want to end up like the man in Robbie Burns' poem. I wasted time. Now how time doth waste me. I, I think you'll find that with Shakespeare, sir. Right. <laughs> I had to tell someone, John. And you know I've no family left in the world. So who better than my private secretary? Last night, I was invited to a grand ball at the Italian embassy. Oh, I hope you had a good time, sir. Good time? Good time? John, I had a private audience with the ambassador. Oh. And do you know what he communicated to me? The king of Italy. The king himself, John, is to bestow upon me the grand order of Italy. Think of that, John. Think of that, John. Those wee, sleepy, <coughs> simmering beasties will not let me join the Royal Yacht Squadron. But the king of Italy gives me the highest honor ever given to a foreigner. Um, cowering, surely. Eh? Uh, cowering beasties, we sleek at cowering. That's no Shakespeare. Oh, no, sir. Now, John, listen. Overwhelmed as I was at this news, I asked His Highness the Ambassador... Excellency. ...if there was anything I could do in return for the honor. Yes, he said. It would be very much appreciated if I could organize a sporting competition over there. Well, naturally, I said as a yachtsman, I'd be glad to. No, he said. And this is the real surprise, John. It seems that the Italians are daft about football. And would I organize a football competition between Italian and English teams? Would I, I said. Not only would I organize it, I'll present the trophy. Not only that, I said, why make it Italy and England? Why not the whole world playing for the trophy? The whole world, sir. The whole world. But uh, may I ask, Sir Thomas, uh, why they have chosen you for such a signal honor? There, I don't mean to be rude, sir. You obviously deserve it, but... My God, man, what have I renowned the whole world over for? The king himself drinks gallons of it. The ambassador drinks our gold-tipped brew, and that's 36 guineas a pound. Last year, we exported three million pounds of it to Italy alone. They love my tea, John. They love it. Now, John, finish your pudding. Get your notebook out. I want you to write to all the competent football authorities in the world, inviting them to compete for the, uh... Um, Lipton's World... Uh, teacup, sir. The World's Lipton Teacup. Now, I've seen those things. They're called cups, but they look more like vases to me. No. A Lipton, crown of Italy, world football trophy. Right, John, stand to it. My God, man, I wager you've got more pudding on your front than you have in your belly. Uh, may I make a suggestion? Yes, yes, yes. We do the usual, I suppose. Well, sir, the Football League has a telephone. <laughs> Northern upstarts. Uh, yes, but it... Oh, go down with it, reader. And don't give us the scores, just the winners. It is just, Your Grace, that we would avoid another embarrassing situation like last year when the chap just threw the bird out of the press box and yelled after it, Wolves 2, Liverpool 1. Reader. Yes, sir. This is the bloody 20th century. Winners, Leicester Foss. Balls. Oh, I don't know, Your Grace. They were highly fancied. No, 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 I meant the balls, Mr. Oh. Darling. Oh. Winners, Otti Nottingham Forest. Number 12. Nottingham Forest. Number 5. Uh, shall play Coventry City. Hmm. That concludes the draw for the third round of the Football Association trophy. Have you got that, reader? Yes, sir. Shall I read it out, sir? No, sorry. Let's get on with the agenda. Um. Item four, 
Letter from Sir Thomas Lipton, Baronet KCB. Bloody oh. Grosha. <laughs> it reads, although I must say this letter should really be the purview of the International Committee. Surely purview. I'm sorry? Purview, not purview. Exactly, it should be the purview of the International Committee. Uh, no, uh, both are surely correct. Uh, one means borders or outskirts, the other means range or scope. I think of finance. Didn't sound right to me. I put my finger on it. The within was missing. Mr. Darling should have said within, then both purlieu and pearl. I want my brandy and soda. We all know what's in this letter. Jumped up, Scott's Grocer wants to hold his own competition. Recommends we offer him the national side. Wants to hold it in Italy. Italy? <laughs> world competition, he wants to call it world competition. The answer's no. All players think about these days money. Let the commercial gentry in and, well, we all know what the result would be. Game ruined. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Shall I write to Sir Thomas, sir, or send a pigeon? Bloody corp with what you've got there. <laughs> Cost us sixpence, Bob. Worth every penny, mine. Well, it's a woman's. Aye. Well, I don't give a bugger. This man was taking us around four hours to Dalton and back. I wasn't including church. I always said you Catholics were daft. <laughs> you don't agree on that? Aye. Sit down, man. Don't pull off the plane Saturday. As a broken hearted keel man and as always heels in love. With a young lass from Gitsa, down a collar, me dog. Right, John, as I learned to say in the United States, is it the cyanide or the candy? A mixture of both, Sir Thomas, uh, although leaning heavily on the cyanide side. Summarize, John. Well, all the home football associations refused to cooperate. The Football League expressed interest, but feel that they cannot interrupt their professional program and suggest that you make a choice from an amateur side. And they can get that tea from Twainings from now on. Well, right. Let's have the candy, John. Well, sir, the Swiss and the Germans and, of course, the Italians have chosen their best teams. And uh, the Italians have requested that the tournament be held in the city of Turin. Oh, not Rome. No, sir. Apparently, Turin has a burgeoning kinematograph industry, and the Italians hope to record the tournament for posterity. Grand, John, grand. Just the boost we needed. But, uh, Sir Thomas, a Lipton's World Trophy with just three teams and a noticeable absence of a British contingent. I've ordered the trophy. It's just a wee thing. A hundred guineas. I've known the world over as a man who never risked a penny in his life. Do you think that associations or leagues can stop me having a team at my own tournament? But whence comes the team, Sir Thomas? Yes, sir. My dad hates charity. He says that one day we will have a world that won't need it. But we had a grand feast on our football pitch. Thank you, David Reese Thomas. West Auckland, County Durham. Well, it's very moving, sir, but... You see, I know it by heart. I'll tell you a wee story, John. At the Diamond Jubilee of our late queen, God rest her, I organized together with Princess Alexandra, now our beloved queen, the Poor Folk's Royal Dinner. 400,000 of the poorest people in the kingdom had a square meal that day. I gave 25,000 pounds. Well, it appealed to my sense of democracy. Well, it's very good of you, I'm sure, sir, but... I'm not finished yet, John. Many civic dignitaries, the Lord Mayor of London even, sent me congratulations on my fine gesture. But of them all, that little lad's letter touched my heart. Right, John. West Auckland. Football pitch. Has a football team? I've inquired. Find that lad, John. He'll be a man now. Find him and tell him that his team will represent England in the Lipton World Trophy. West Auckland, sir. But 
What sort of a team are these, sir? Poor. Damn poor. But then I began damn poor, too. Come on, man. You'll find it in the north of England. But if... But me, no ifs, John. I think you'll find that in Shakespeare. No. Come on, man. Come on, Come on, Come on, Keep the noise down. Quiet. Listen. Uh, well, gentlemen, you have had time to digest the intelligence. Uh, not an inordinately large amount of time, I must confess, but... Um, What's he talking about, Dr. I'm ready and happy to uh, answer any, any queries you may have. He's saying we've heard the news and have we got any questions? Aye. Uh, Mr. Weston. Oh, uh, you think you can... Mr. Baron, I really don't think I could manage this. You don't think a small sherry would be possible? Uh, you're not in Darlington now, you... Um, I, I don't... Uh, no, no. I don't think it'd be feasible, no. sir. Um, a scotch? Would I have a small scotch, perhaps? Have a whiskey, Pet! Now then, uh, you had a question, Mr. Um... Bob Jones, I'm Captain. Oh, yes. Well, you see, Mr. Westwood, you come here out of nowhere, like... London? We've seen a card, then we're one that can read like. We heard you speak about Sir Thomas and Tice's letter. Which I don't remember right. Well, shut up, Tice. Go on, Bob. You spoke of this World Trophy and Italy. But we've never seen you before. I mean, we heard a Lipton's tea like. But my mind is asking is, well, is this some kind of... Oh, hell, what's the word, Tice? Mr. Weston, I don't know who you speak. Let's get Is this some kind of grand hoax? Really, Bob? Oh, no, 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 Mr. Baron. I fully appreciate Mr. Jones's concern. And I can assure you that under the circumstances, um, strange as they must seem to you, that whilst you have every reason to impugn... Tacey's at it again. Oh, Sir Thomas. Thomas's good faith, I can assure you that this is not a hoax. Excuse me, I've got a question. Yes, yes. Why, you why, West Auckland? Everybody knows that Bishop Auckland's the best team in the league. Oh, man. bloody thump you, you oh. duck bugger. Oh, don't worry, young man. Sir Thomas is well aware that your team is not of the... <laughs> We're rotten, man. Hey! Yeah. Sit down! Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that, uh, yes, uh, no, carry no, on, please. Um, I wouldn't have put it that way myself. Uh, Sir Thomas is well aware of your league position. You are, unfortunately... Uh, not of the top rank. However, as I explained to you, you owe it all to Mr. Thomas and his letter. Which I still don't remember right. And to Sir Thomas's sense of democracy. We all get the vote, and I that taste. <laughs> and all food will be provided by the Italian authorities. Other expenses incurred will be dealt with by the individual teams. Yourselves, Juventus, that's the team from Turin itself, Red Star of Zurich in Switzerland and Stuttgart in Germany. Now, the tournament will last over one week at Easter. Order of playing and any other matters arising will be dealt with by a committee chosen from the four teams. Now, all the foreign teams are professional and will naturally be expecting some sort of remuneration. However, I think it only fair that West Auckland should have some recompense in the form of a share of the gate money. <laughs> Well, Mr. Gentlemen, I wish you well and good fortune in the tournament. And I can assure you that Sir Thomas will be present at the games and is looking forward to meeting you all and seeing you uphold the finest traditions of your country. Now, I'm sure that you will let neither him nor yourselves down. No stores. <laughs> Sir Thomas Lipton and Mr. John Westwood. Sir Thomas Lipton. Sir Thomas Lipton. Sir Thomas Lipton.
As, uh, as uh, the secretary of the, of the club, uh, Sir Westwood, I'd be very, sorry. Uh, as, as the secretary of the club, uh, Sir Westwood, I'd be very grateful if you would ask uh, uh, Mr. Thomas to send all the correspondence to me. Uh, that's um, bar one, um, two hours. Sorry. Now, stinging lads, has the booze got to you? Hey, man, don't worry. Mr. Westwood's paid for all this evening. Why, 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 uh, Mr. Barham with Pittman? How the bloody hell can we afford to go to Italy? Uh. Dad's watch. You know he meant for you to have it. But I'm going to keep it for one of the burns. Take it, Rob. What they won't have, they won't miss. You'll miss it. Get going. Oh, well, you're a smashing lass. Go on. Bad people, isn't it? Bad people, isn't it? Go on, set Charlie. Aye, right, Bob, Rachel. See you later. Nope. How will you get to church? Well, before I had it, I can walk again. Besides, it'll get us fitted for the truth. Hey, Danny. See you later. Oh, oh. See you later, Chris. Yeah. Every one of the lads, their furniture sold. That's how we raised most of the cash. There was a collection in the village. Mr. Bolko Vaughan, the pit owner, kindly gave us the time off. With no pay, of course and no guarantee we'd come back to a job. So, with a few bob we could leave behind, and help from the Durham Miners Federation, we hoped our wives and bairns would survive. And that was it. We were off and running. Apart, that is, from a few words of advice from Mr. Barron. Come on, order, look, sit down. Come on, listen, order. Right. Now, I'm not sure this is fit for your ears, young man, but since you're here, you might as well be advised, too. So, now, besides upholding the good name of West Auckland, nay, England, there are certain things that have to be borne in mind when visiting foreign parts. In the war, we had to fight not only the Boer, but our own natures as well. <clears throat> Frequently, our urges were to consort with members of the distaff side, to wit, women. For the most part, we kept ourselves in hand, but sad to say, some of us fell by the wayside. And unfortunately, we shall be sometimes in the company of females. It's a matter that cannot be helped. Now, <clears throat> most of you are married men, and I expect you to remember that. But for those of you who are not married and who are tempted, let me tell you what we were told in South Africa. Strange, terrible sicknesses befell those young men. Sicknesses from which some of them did not recover. And though I cannot vouch for having seen it with my own eyes, I have heard that several of those young chaps went blind, some mad. And in one extreme case, a young man's apparent...
appendage came completely away from his body. Have we got the sandwiches? Black pudding. Yes. Pudding. What's an appendage, Taser? Stomach sticking out your body. Like your nose and ears, you mean? We oui, are, man. Like your nose and ears. Now, let's show them who we are. Come on, I'll get... Here's yours. Okay. Yeah, one for me, one hey, for me. Hey, the funny, yeah? Mr. Barnes, been up all neat milk and these, you know. Didn't I spill your beer all over it, man? I'm gonna just stay on, Link. Right. Now, two our breasts in procession. Perfect order in procession. No females in procession and no smoking in procession. Right, gentlemen, Italy, here we come. <laughs> Middle of the night waiting for the boat train at Victoria Station. All that excitement coming down near gone, like the sandwiches and the ale. None of us ever been further than Darlington or York for an away game. And I was dreaming it was all a hoax, and I waking up lying in a 12-inch seam. Instead of which, the next thing that happens is us getting our first taste of the channel. Or rather, the channel getting its first taste of us. Bloody hell, Bob. It was like that all the way over, with most of us thinking that being at the coalface wasn't so bad after all. But dry land and on the train from Boulogne to Turin. What did we find? The air was nuts, but you could buy wine, bottles of it, and dirt cheap too. So that's how we came to miss most of France. So nothing of Paris. I woke up thick-headed in Italy. Well, who's he? What's the welcoming party? Oh, uh, Buon Guy Ono Signor. Gordon Knightley, British Consul. Oh, um, Sydney Baron, Club Secretary. Yes, man. Couldn't you have made some attempt at a decent turnout? We've had a hell of a journey, man. You must have some inkling of the fame you enjoy here. Famous? Do you hear that, lads? You said we're famous here. <laughs> It can't be for football. Surely that intelligence has reached London. Couldn't you at least have matched that with some attempt at proper dress? Bloody hell! Come on. Right, lads, in twos, quick march! How come we're being bloody twos, man, when there's 13? Well, you could make the effort. Now, come on! Al, uno, due, tre. That says 
possible it's Arsenal. I don't understand. Oh, bloody hell. Is that the sole extent of your repertoire of ever that talk? What do you mean, Tice? Repertoire? For Christ's sake, Toka man, get yourself a dictionary. Signore, buongiorno. Benvenuto all'Italia. Benvenuto a Torino. Benvenuto alla meravigliosa squadra inglese Woolwich Arsenal. Piacere di conoscerla, signore. Well, that you made a friend there, Mr. Barron. Uh, you got a name? Put that back. <laughs> uh, Bob Jones, our captain. But I, I think there's uh, been some sort uh -huh. of failure. Sorry, nice Bob. Bob. I think right. we'll keep this bunch on a tight rein whilst you're here. We know our place. It is to be hoped that you do. Signore, attention. Gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to Italy. Welcome to Turin. It is delightful to meet the wonderful team of Woolwich Arsenal. What power there is to give you enjoy in our great city, we do so. Now, in your Hanauer, Maestro. <laughs> Sodges. Are those chaps ill? No, we're not bloody Woolwich Arsenal either. You're not Woolwich Arsenal? No. I don't understand. The cable from Sir Thomas Lipton clearly said, WAFC accept invitation to play in my world trophy. Aha, uh -huh, WA. West Auckland. West Auckland? Aye. Ah. Aye, ah. ah, West bloody Auckland. No, I would Fakino. Now we are processing to your accommodating. Ah. The people of Turing are awaiting you. Aha. A famous English team for the famous Woolwich Arsenal. Avanti! Uno, due, tre. Right, lads. Let's just show them who we are. In pairs now. Buongiorno, signori, benvenuti al pensione Contebidon. I speak English well. The first to sing, then perhaps washing and resting, yes? I am being sorry at the two gentlemen having to share rooms. Ah, oh, well, that'll not bother us, man. Look, they got two netties. Charlie, it's hot, man. Look, Daisy didn't have to light it. Pronto. Bye, isn't this something? Oh. This is the life. This is the life. Uh, you're great at telling Jesse. Buongiorno. Oh, 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 oh
Arrivederci. Well, I think you lot could do with another go round. Oh, oh, I don't oh, 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 now, come on, you saw that lad. You're playing professionals now, you know. They'll all be fit and freeze, man. Come over, kick a boot, Mr. Barrett. <laughs> kick a boot? I uh, kick a boot? You know my theory on that. What do you mean, Lee? Mr. Barron believes that if you train without a ball, uh -huh. it makes you hungry for it when you're playing. Uh, well, there's only one thing wrong with that. You did not recognize a bugger when you uh, see it. Right, well, come on, let's have you running again. Come on, round the park. Come on, get going. Come on, let's be having you. 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 Is it good, yes? What is it? Spaghetti alla bolognese. Do you eat it or knit it? I show. Please, do all a watch. You take this in your hand. Then you make it like this. Then in the mouth. But first, the Parmesan. Come, everybody. Signore, per favore. First, the wine. Then, the water. Now get too drunk, see? To team Inglesi. No, no, it's all right. Good looking. Good looking. Good looking. Good looking. Is there anything requiring only to ask? Please, enjoy. Enjoy. What about some proper food? Only do that. I'd like to propose a toast to us, lads. But as the uh, chapper said, keep the drinking in hand, because you know it goes straight to your head. Now, straight to bed after this. You know that uh, Bob and I have got this meeting with the other team's chaps in the morning to sort out uh, things and such. <clears throat> so I trust you'll uh, not neglect your training. Gentlemen of England. <coughs> Good luck. Go on, son, get stuck in. Get on. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Well, you better be bloody worth it. Bloody right. Oh, well, then. Makes you feel like a millionaire, eh, Rob? Here's a penny. Thanks, man. Oh, I don't suppose it matters being English. It's a votive offering. It's still money, but... but where's this, uh, thing we've come to see? Behind the glass, see? Inside that casket is the shroud that was wrapped round our Lord when he was taken down from the cross. His image can be clearly seen on it. Get away. Huh? How do we get it out? Have a look at it. Get it out? It's only taken on the special occasions. It's very fragile, you know, being so old. Yeah, way, man. That could be anything in there. Sarah Domino's. Oh, Dalton Thomas, that's you. Do you know how to pray? 
pray. And what do we pray for? Anything you want. Oh, Lord, please don't let we get thumped by the other teams. See, si, Signore? Well, somebody speak up. Well, I don't know what to say, man. Somebody bloody say summit. Here, lad. Play, man, Signor. Eel. We'd like some eel. Hell? Yeah. Eel. No, eel. Okay. Try beer, man. Beer. Ah, beer. Beer, aye. Set the beer. Any sort, like it. Set the beer. Eh, did you? Draft beer. Eh? Bugger it, Jack. Let's see what comes. Aye. Set the beer. See, see, set it. I wonder how they're getting on, like. Set the beer. Who? Oh. Well, Mr. Barron and Jonesy. At the meeting with the other team's blokes. Who cares? <laughs> a right shit. You come the bits in your mouth. I'll tell you what, though. The air here's great, man. Since I've been here, I haven't coughed once. Well, me, I've noticed something else, too. When I spit, it's white, not black. Aye. I'll tell you what, though, after that knitting stuff we had last night, I was up all the time on the lobby. Which one did you use? Eh? Nitty, you know. Normal one or funny one. Well, it must have been the funny one because it was dark like, but I couldn't get the water to work. <laughs> it's funny looking draft. Bonjour, Mando. Bonjour. Who's that face? Ah, We'll uh, just split the bill between, we? Eh? Aye. Aye, Dougie. Aye. How much is it? I don't know. Oh, well, I don't like that. Like not piss. Oh, I couldn't give a sod. This is the life. That's the life. Right. Drink of blood, sir. Leave me out. I've got a missus at home. It's sure some of you. Besides, there's only three of them. They'll just have a go-to's up. Hello, Bonnie Lassus. Hello. Would you like a drink? Yeah, then. Smiling at me. Uh, Sweet. Buongiorno, signore. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, hey, oh, hey. On first ship again, Oggy. Check the pick on me, boy. Oh. Right. Away, Charlie. I've got three bands, one on the way. Charlie, didn't we use Boyle's fort? Well, I reckon I'll come, but I'm doing now. You're watching me, bunny lad. Hey, I'm in the conto. Oh, no. Help! What about this bloody bill? <laughs> Hey, no boom boom. Go away, I'm, I'm a married man. Boom boom, see? I'm married. Married man. I bet. I'm curious for that. Go away. Hai fame, signore? Fame? Allora andiamo a mangiare, né? Madam, allow me to lace your boots. I have explained once I am a married man. I do not go around tupping other women. But if I was to tup anybody, I'd be upstairs tupping the young ones. Not a granny like you. Ah, oh, well, Lord. Those tall feathery ones, they were Asphodelus albus. And the little blue flower, Vinga minor, by hell I took. Aye, lovely taste. That makes how many? Oh, let me just look. 
Ranunculus bulbosus, Oxytropus carnosa, Umbilatum, Chulipa sylvestris. Six? And we haven't even started. Very <laughs> <laughs> right, lads. Are we late? I saw the This is cold. Well, it'll be the fir first cold thing you've had the day. <laughs> Bloody old Tice, you should have been with my lads. I was practically stripped like. And this lass kneels down and she. Why, if I as much as suggested, even gave a hint to my missus to do the same, I think she'd be struck dumb. And you know what? Because we're. Oh, what lads, sir? Uh, one lira. And I went mad with gratitude. Didn't I, lads? You silly sozzler, note. It's Lyra. It's Lyra. It's not Lyra, it's Lyra. Lyra. You should consult my book if you could bloody read. Oggy lad, you're divin' out what you miss, man. Well, it took you long enough. Now, me, Oggy lad, I went like a bloody rocket. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> shut up! Shut up! It might interest you to know that Bob here and me have had a long and tedious day with the representatives of the other teams. We came home weary, expecting to find you in the same condition. We are bloody weary. Perhaps <laughs> you train it. But what do we see? Them there in the lobby with great bunches of flowers like a pair of Nancy boys. <laughs> that religious maniac dragging the other silly buggers are around the churches. <laughs> Will you listen? And as for the rest of you... Hey, I did no. Shut up! As for the rest of you, all I can say to you is... Appendages. Bobby will tell you the outcome of the meeting. But because of it, I will be unavailable for intercourse with now you. Now what you feel like. <laughs> until after War Force game. What's intercourse, Tease? <laughs> what's going to him? He's right. We've had a bloody awful day. Trying to make him understand was hard enough. But they've tried to pull a couple of fast ones. And they succeeded. First, substitutes. Eh? What's that? They have an idea, like, that if a player's badly injured enough to leave the field for the rest of the game, they can bring on a new one. The Loran. I'm not finished. We haven't brought a referee with her. Brought a referee with her? It was in the rules, it seems. Only nobody noticed. Well, who were playing first, Rob? Red Star Zurich, Swiss lads. We had to choose a ref out of our lot. Tyson. <laughs> who then? Mr. Barron. Oh. <laughs> what does he know about reffing? What does he know about football? <laughs> no, no, we're Bob. Who did we get? Uh, Swiss fella, German, Italian gadget, or what? Mr. Barron. I thought he was responsible looking. And he had the best suit. Smelled well, foul, man. Grapper. Oh, I. Maybe it's a liniment, you know, for rubbing on. Oh, <laughs> Bloody up! <hell. laughs> I will. Uh... Away, lads. We're a football team, not a nattering club. Come on. <laughs> What's this? Well, it's a present. It's a sort of uh, it's a souvenir. Got out to give them. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Gentlemen. Hang on, hang on. What's your shit? Huh? Tice! What? what? There's a rat left in that bottle. Aye, Bob, aye. aye. Keeps it here. What do you want to grab her for? And take care of it. Here you are. Thank you. Is that the best we could do? Well, no one told us out about gifts. Oh, dear. Why grab her? Why not? I'll be watching you. <laughs> We were a bad start, and Baron was no help. He was going to be fair to both sides if it killed itself. And straight away, it looked as if he'd done for us. Hey, man, <laughs> 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 it's 
a penalty. Call it was a clean shuttle. You brought that man down. He bloody died. Wretched man. Look, it's a penalty. Oh, wait, Mr. Farron. I am not Mr. Farron. You, I am the referee. Penalty. Mr. Barron's given a pedal. He hasn't, has he? Dunk shouldn't. Huh? He shouldn't be reffing money. He hasn't got a clue. <laughs> I reckon that did it. That penalty, together with a couple of other incidents. Oh, come on, Larry! I'm not joking, Bobby. What's going on? It's a Oh, well, what have you done? It's me angle, man. <laughs> hey. <coughs> now, uh, this man's foot is kaput. He should come off. Ha-ha. Yeah. Yeah, off you go. Come, come on. on. Come on, lads. Cheers, him, man. Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Come on, Hey. Oh. How is that, Rob? Oh. Good to skip him out. Yeah. No. We won't be playing for some no. time, Bob. Although I think it's a twist, right. not a break. Mr. Farron, then, eh? Can I move that, Bob? 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 Can I move We've got a referee who has a 12-inch seam where he should have brains. What's all bloody what, man? Look, the game's not over. They can play a bit. Well, what have we got to show them, eh? Right, I'll tell you, right? We've got that. We're hard men. We'll lead a hard life. We've got that. Four generations of colliers in my family. We didn't breed weeping willows. Iron, that's what we're made of. That's what we're going to bloody show, right? Bloody iron. Look, man, we haven't come all this way to, to curl up, roll over. I don't give a bugger for Sir Thomas Lipton or his bloody trophy. I don't give a bugger for England. All it does is keep me down a dark hole for 12 hours of the day. But I care for us, right? West Auckland. So let's get out there and show them bloody iron. Let's show them iron. Tice, get some kit on. How are you? How are you? How well? If the Swiss lads thought Tyson was a makeweight, they soon had another thing coming. Wearing Frank's kit and boots, which were too big for him, he ran them ragged. you could say that do and me and Frank brought us out fighting. So Frank was out of the final. Aye, the final. We were through to the final of the World Cup. But what I think got us there was Huggy's speech. Iron is what he said we had, and iron is what we showed. Aye. And by God, didn't we fortify it by going out and getting right pie-eyed. We even had some of that grapper. But I reckon Tice is right. It is liniment. 
But I'm coming on. Wait, come on faster. It's all right for you. You can't even read English. Just give us a score, man. Juventus lads won 2-0. Juventus. Eh? Juventus. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Be quiet. Lads. Lads. Lads, can I have your attention, please? Now, I'd like to introduce us all to Mr... Signor Atoni. Filippo Atoni. Mr. Filippo Atoni. And he's the manager of uh, June Ventus. You Ventus. What? You Ventus. Shut up, Tice. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, he's invited us all to come and watch his lads play in the park. He reckons we might be able to give him some tips. Now, the Sharabang is outside. Uh, and away and out away. Now, now, come on! Buono, buono. Calma, calma. Facciamo un po' di calma. Buono. Warm up, yes. Uh, yes. Occhio al pallone. Equilibrio. Eh, vicino, vicino. Così. See that? Tira, tira. Bene, Mario. Tira. No, no. Long kicks. You can't shoot from that distance. Ah, uh, we should go back more. Da più lontano, ragazzi. Più a destra, defendete, che lato? Così. Forza. Beh. Excuse me. Yes? Him. His name is Walty. He is quite good. But the English, they're good. Invent again. Masters. Masters. Buono, buono. Go. Salta su. Waldy. Right. It swerved, you say? Bloody ball, swerved. Well, it must have been a fir fluke. Third fluke. He did it time after time. How many times did he do it, Bob? I give up counting. Look, who taught the bloody game to the walls? This lot were taught by bloody circus. There are a load of clowns then, eh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Who's top of Division One? Newcastle, then, haven't they been? Newcastle. They're good, right? Oh, right. They would have not like these buggers. No. Nah, they're nowhere near as tricky. Playing a different game, right, Huggy? Right. <sighs> good night, gentlemen. Good night, Mr. Battle. Do not despair now. Balls, man! Give us some balls! Uh -huh. Joe, well, lads, held them a 2 0. You'll have to have arms like an octopus when we play that lot. I just, uh, please, they don't turn up. You know what we've got to do then? Aye. Start as we mean to go on. I want to know where we're starting from. Aye. David Reese Thomas. Th thank you, sir. No, young man. I thank you. I should have done it years ago. You brought us all together. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sidney Barron, top secretary. Pleased to meet you, sir. He gave us a pennant. And we give them a box of hankies. Our plan was simplicity itself.
were right, they could be tricky. But one goal, and it seemed like they gave up the ghost. Especially when the lads got stuck in. Tucker, I warn you about that language. I'll sit. knows what sort of gabble went on amongst them at half time but it could only have been half a pep talk because they came out and for five minutes or so had us going this way and that way in a maze was the end of them. But for yours truly, my golden moment was to come. We sensed the Italians had gone brown trousered, and funnily enough, seemed knackered as well. And me, who literally was half knackered, sewed it all up. Well, that was a rugby tackle if ever I saw one. Penalty, of course, and up stepped the skipper. It. We've done it. The Sir Thomas Lipton Trophy. The World Cup. All that remained was the presentation. And by God. Signore, signore, scusate. I speak in English. Woolwich Arsenal. <laughs> we are Stockland and Sir Thomas. Excuse me, signore, signore. A bitter, madame, and heron. Also, parla inglese. Squirt in English. I call upon the winning captain, Mr. Robert Jones. To accept the World Lipton Trophy for Association Football. Your turn, old man. Ah, uh, uh, well, uh, ta. Ra ra bumpie. Grazie. Grazie. Come here. When? We arrange it. Let's get this straight. You want us to come here, live here, and play with you? We're married. We've got bairns, uh, children. We don't know the lingo. You learn. You bring your women, your children. We pay. Torino is a beautiful city, yes. To live in, play football professionally. No. Oh. Can I say, man? You think? Take time. You write to me, gentlemen. Now England is master of football.
but one day Italy, with what you give us, I am, will be master. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Thank you. I can't wait. Hey. I don't know. Well, you must have written this down, man. Why, no. Oh. I know where we are. Well, for Christ's sake, Crashy, get us home, man. Well, I can't do that, man. Well, I thought you said you knew where we were. Whoa. Oh, I do, yeah, I know where we are. But I don't know where the hotel is. Oh, oh Christ. Geez. Ah, Christ is right. I don't know where the hotel is, but I know where we can keep. Oh, hey, lads. Consulate, cable home, and landlady of the Greyhound pays were fair in return for the world trophy. Of course, bailiffs were waiting for us. Us, the lions of Turin. Anyway, the village went mad. Taking that Turin offer. Aye. In 1911, West Auckland returned to Turin to defend the trophy. In the first game, they beat Stuttgart, and in the final, they beat Juventus again by 2 0. Winning the trophy twice, they thus held and hold it in perpetuity. Uh, Thais? Hmm? What's perpetuity? Forever, Tuka, lad. Forever. Forever.